Um, so, you know, I just want to just acknowledge that for nine months we've been in lockdown and that, uh, you know, people have been stressing over this and that Jesus is the release of that stress. And prayer is the release of that stress and fasting and spending time before the Lord and saying, look, I know that because I've been a little bit of, uh, in, in an emotional frenzy over so many different things that seem unfair to me that, that I might be more vulnerable than normal to the enemy, but I am not going to let my spiritual immune system weaken in any way because the devil's a liar and he wants to get you to dine on his food. But this is the truth of the word of God. And that's what Jesus said. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. We have that same mission. You know that, right? So whenever the lie looks a little tempting, you counter it with the truth. Amen? You guys can say amen. That's legal in this church. There it is. Yeah, thank God for you too, Nate. Nobody going to throw him out for amening. That's a good thing. We like the amens. <laughs> So, Lord, I just pray that as we read your word today, our hearts would be open. You said it pierces us right down to the division, that dividing line, to the bone marrow of our soul and our spirit, man. It reveals light. It brings light into us. Your word is truth. And we pray, Lord, it will counter every lie that the enemy tries to feed us and that we will reject the invitation to have dinner with the devil and say, no, I, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me, in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, so John chapter 8 is where that comes from, the father of lies. When I say we're refusing to dine with the father of lies, that's the name that Jesus gave the devil, the father of lies. And the New Testament tells us in James that God is the father of lights. So I'd rather follow the father of lights than lies. The Pharisees uh, often, and the religious people, are painted by Jesus as being in the wrong camp. And he's speaking to them, actually, when he says that you're listening to your father, the devil. These are the religious people. That should be a real eye-opener for us as the church, right? If we expect the culture to change, the judgment has to begin first where? In the house of the Lord. And if my people who are called by my name will... Humble themselves and pray, purpose to seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal your land. I think we need to keep on praying for America more now than ever, yeah. right? And not say, oh, no, it's not turning out the way I thought it was supposed to turn out. Well, we need to always be praying. And if we're sober-minded and we just stay focused, and I don't know about you, but I've been fasting a lot more in the last few months than I ever have in my life. And the Lord has, has been speaking to me. So when I get up here on a Sunday morning, you know, in many churches, they say the word of the Lord for today is, and that's fine, but I believe he wants to give us a specific word of the Lord for today for us, for this church. And fasting and praying and spending time on your knees allows you to hear the voice of the Lord clearly. Do we suffer from the sin of prayerlessness? Right? That's what Samuel said to Israel. You've asked for a king, but far be it from me that I would sin by ceasing to pray for you. All right? So look, as bad as the culture might look to us, and it does look bad to me, the church has always flourished when the culture is going in the toilet. Because that's when the light shines. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So that's who we're supposed to be, light shining. The darker it gets, the brighter the light shines. Amen? You good with me on that? By faith, say amen. <laughs> John 8, 37. You are descendants. Jesus, speak it to the Pharisees. You're descendants of Abraham. Yes, they were taking their status in the fact that they were Jews and that they were descendants of Abraham. But here you are plotting to murder me, Jesus is saying to them, because you don't welcome my voice into your lives. And many of the people that you object to, their political positions, don't welcome the voice of God into their lives, right? And most of the time, you could summarize it by what it says in Psalm 2, the heathen are raging against any restrictions. Whatever rules God wants to put on them, we know as Christians that they're there for our good, but they feel to the world that people like, no, I don't need those restrictions because I'm the king of my own castle. <laughs> and boy, that castle's going to blow up. 
if you're counting on you being the king. And that's one of the beauties of being submitted to the Lord is saying, no, I recognize your name is above my name. Your thoughts are above my thoughts. I'm going to be submitted to your will for my life because you know better than I do. How many found that to be true? I hope so. If you're not raising your hand, then let's say the sinner's prayer right now. Because that's key to being a Christian is that you're submitting your will to the Father, just like Jesus said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And then in verse 40 of John 8, he says, you're trying to kill me. Jesus, the true son of God, the sons of Abraham, the Pharisees wanted to murder him. And that's spiritual warfare, right? Whenever the local stronghold is being challenged and being threatened, the first thing it wants to do is take out the competition. Instead of saying, I need to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and recognize, you could say to Martha and Mary, God in the form of Jesus is sitting in the living room right now. Let's not worry about the dishes, Martha. <laughs> Jesus said, Mar Mary chose the better thing. He's walking right in your midst. Let's pay attention to what his presence means in our lives and not get hung up about, oh, I'm giving up this and I'm giving up that. The boundaries he draws on our lives are for our good because we don't have the ability in our own strength to control our appetites. And I don't mean that just food appetites. I mean sexual appetites and spending appetites. And One of the fruit of the Holy Spirit listed in Galatians is self-control and temperance. He fills that gap of our inability. You know how Paul said, I try to do it, and the things I try to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I keep repeating. Who's going to deliver me from this mess? It's a real loud answer, isn't it, church? You missed your opportunity there to join the choir. Jesus! It's hard with the mess on, I know, so turn up your volume. <laughs> and then in verse 44, Jesus really brings it. This is not the gentle little Jesus. He's saying to them, the Pharisees, you are just like your true father, the devil. And not a gentle little Jesus, is it? He's laying it out there for the truth. But if you know the truth, it'll set you free. And then Jesus says this in the voice translation. It says, at the core of the devil's character, he is a liar. The very core. Everything he speaks originates in lies because he's the father of lies. All right, so I refuse to dine with the father of lies. How about you? Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. That's a decision that I'm making. I'm going to filter every thought. I'm going to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And anything that doesn't line up with the truth of the word, it's getting rejected. But let me tell you, it looks really delicious, doesn't it? He has a way of being a, a shining light, the devil does, because it's harder to follow God's rules. It's harder to live that disciplined life of walking in that narrow road, right? It's, it's the way to go. It's the better way to go, but the world makes it look very appealing. And I've called it a, a dark anointing at different parts of my life, where it seems like when there's an atmosphere or many rebellious people are together, it generates a field of rebellion, just like we can see the anointing on the Lord where we get together and we worship. It says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds even more. Right? But when you, when you step into a group of people like, a, like the Hell's Angels, let's just say, like anybody that would call themselves that name, I guess I could use them as an example, is like all of a sudden that takes on an extra momentum that can get, that could pull you in. And I work on Wall Street a lot, you know that, and that trading floor mindset is that way. And it's mammon that's the counterfeit God, right? And we know the love of money is the root of all evil, so boom, like there you go. That's a, that's a pretty wicked combination. And yet there's Christians on Wall Street shining light in the middle of that place and bringing people to the Lord who know how empty that whole thing is. So look... But God, that's what you have to say. No matter how big the enemy's force field is, God is greater. And that we are his representatives. We're like the special forces for the Lord. 